Good evening my dear children and welcome to yet another episode of Terrific Tuesdays. In a few days from now we will be entering in what can be best described as one of the most important weeks in the Christian calendar. A week that is so important and central to our faith. And that my dear children is Holy Week. Now how does Holy Week begin? Holy Week begins on Palm Sunday when Jesus triumphantly rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And people lined the streets on both sides in order to welcome Jesus waving palm branches in their hands. And they acknowledged Jesus as their King and Messiah and they were welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem as their King and their Messiah. And after the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, my dear children, after a few days, we celebrate Maundy Thursday. Now Maundy Thursday is the day when Jesus gave us one, his supreme commandment of love. He showed us how we were to love one another and he gave us this beautiful gesture by taking a towel, by wrapping it around his waist and by getting down on his knees and washing the feet of his disciples. The disciples were so, so shocked by this gesture of Jesus that they couldn't really understand what Jesus was doing. But by getting down and washing the feet of his disciples like a servant, Jesus was showing them and Jesus is showing each one of us, my dear children, how we are to humble ourselves, love one another and serve one another. That is so important for us as Christians. And not only that, on Monday, Thursday, once he had washed the feet of his disciples, my dear children, he celebrated the first Eucharistic meal or the first Mass or the first Eucharist with his disciples in which he gave his body and blood to them under the species of bread and wine. And that is what we celebrate every time we come to church in the Eucharist. So these are the two important elements of Maundy Thursday. The service, the great commandment of love that Jesus performed by washing the feet of his disciples and then by celebrating the Eucharist, by giving us the Eucharist by which we remember Jesus' sacrifice every time we come for Mass and celebrate the Eucharist. Now, after Monday Thursday, my dear children, the very next day, Jesus gave us the supreme sacrifice of his life when he died for us on the cross. He was brutally tortured, he was mutilated, a crown of thorns was placed on his head and he was so brutally nailed to the cross. His hands and feet were nailed to the cross and Jesus gave up his life for us on the cross on Good Friday. But why do we call it Good Friday, my dear children, if Jesus died on that day? It is because by dying on the cross for each one of us, he saved us from the power of evil and from hell. And by his sacrifice, Jesus saved us from the same consequence, from the same happening to us. He saved us. And that is why we call it Good Friday. And then after Good Friday, my dear children, after spending three days in the tomb, Jesus rose again to new life on Easter Sunday. And uh, we are so joyful and happy on Easter Sunday. We look forward to that day so much so that we can celebrate with our families. We can go for Mass and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus because just like Jesus rose from the dead, we too will also one day rise from the dead because Jesus has won victory for us over death. So this, my dear children, is a brief introduction to Holy Week. And therefore I thought today, let us go one by one through each of these holy days to understand the story behind these days, what actually happened, and what does it really mean for each one of us. Now I'm sure that all of you all may have played with a magnet sometime or the other, no? So I've got here a magnet with me. This is a very powerful, it's quite a powerful magnet. And you know that a magnet attracts metallic things. No? A lot of things are attracted to a magnet. Now here, for example, I've got some paper clips with me here in a little dish. And you know what happens when I move a magnet on top of it, no? The pins all start getting attracted to the magnet. So you can see that this magnet is attracting all the paper clips towards it, no? So this is what a magnet does. It attracts powerfully metallic things towards itself. In the same way, my dear children, Holy Week is like a very powerful magnet that draws us into a very powerful encounter with Jesus. You know, we, our life is so full of Jesus and we are so absorbed into his passion, death and resurrection during Holy Week. We experience so much during those days. We go to church for the services and for the masses and we really enter into the supreme love that Jesus had for us. No Christian can escape Holy Week. And therefore, this is a very beautiful time. It's a very holy time for each one of us. And so therefore now, let us go, like I said, through each of these days, one by one, through these very wonderful animation stories that show us what happened on each of these days. Let's begin with Palm Sunday. God's Story, Palm Sunday. So part of God's story happened on a day we call Palm Sunday, and it begins like this. Remember how God sent his son Jesus to rescue us? Well, not everybody believed that Jesus was really God's son and the rescuer. 
But the ones who did believe in him did something pretty cool on Palm Sunday. It started just like any other day for Jesus. He was heading into Jerusalem with his disciples. But before they got there, Jesus did something surprising. He stopped and sent two of his disciples to go get a young donkey from a nearby village. He even told them exactly where the owner had last tied it up. They weren't sure why he needed the donkey, but they obeyed him. Kids, would you be willing to obey Jesus even if he asked you to do something you didn't understand? Anyway, when the disciples got back with the donkey, they threw their coats on its back like a saddle and Jesus climbed up. Pretty soon, the disciples saw why Jesus needed it. See, crowds of people came to the road and started laying coats and tree branches to make a path for Jesus. When this happened, many people recognized that Jesus was a king. Only kings came into a city like this. So Jesus rode the donkey, like he was a one-man parade. And the crowds praised Jesus by yelling things like, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, and peace in heaven and glory in the highest, because they believed Jesus was the rescuer. But remember how some people didn't believe Jesus was God's son? Well, they told Jesus to make everybody stop yelling. They didn't think Jesus deserved to be treated like a king. You know what Jesus said? He told them, if they keep quiet, the rocks will cry out. Well, the people who didn't believe in Jesus didn't like thinking about people or rocks praising him. And that made Jesus sad. He actually started crying. And not just crying, weeping. Here, the people were standing next to the rescuer they'd been wanting and waiting for their whole lives. And they were missing it. But even though Jesus cried, Palm Sunday isn't a sad story. Easter is all about Jesus' amazing rescue, and Palm Sunday is a reminder of just how special that rescue is, and how much Jesus loves everyone. And that's the story of Palm Sunday. Now, my dear children, I'm sure that you have watched some movies where someone gets kidnapped, and then a rescue mission is launched in order to save that person from the hands of their abductors. Uh, two movies come to my mind. The first is the movie Taken, uh, starring Liam Neeson in the main role. Now in this film, Liam Neeson's wife and daughter are kidnapped by some bad guys and uh, Liam Neeson's character then launches a rescue mission. He sets out in order to free his wife and his daughter from the hands of these bad guys. It's a very interesting movie and it shows how he goes about doing it. The next movie that comes to my mind, my dear children, is Saving Private Ryan. It's quite an old movie. It stars uh, Tom Hanks as a soldier and uh, Tom Hanks his character as a soldier and a group of soldiers in this movie are entrusted with the task of going out into the battlefield of locating and bringing back home the soldier named Private Ryan who is the last surviving sibling of his family. All of his brothers have been killed in action during World War II and then the US Army realizes that he is the last remaining son of his mother and so therefore they want to get him back to his mother and so therefore Tom Hanks and the other soldiers they set out into the battlefield to locate him and to bring him back home. That too is a very beautiful movie and I think it even won an Oscar. Now Holy, F now Holy Week, my dear children, is a rescue mission like this. Holy Week is a rescue mission launched by God in order to save us. In fact, it is the greatest rescue mission in the history of mankind. God sent his only begotten son, Jesus, whom he loved so much, in order to come down on earth to die on our behalf. And hence, in doing that, he saved us from the clutches of Satan, our abductor, and the fires of hell. So, this is such a beautiful rescue mission, and Holy Week is the story of this rescue mission. Now, my dear children, let's go to the next important day, that is Maundy Thursday, and find out what happened on Maundy Thursday through this beautiful video. God's Story, Jesus' Last Supper. So, part of God's story is about the night before Jesus died, and it begins like this. Jesus knew he was going to go back to heaven soon, but he hadn't finished teaching his friends everything they needed to know. So he planned a special supper with 12 of his closest friends, called his disciples. A disciple means a Jesus follower. Anybody who follows Jesus gets to be his disciple and his friend, including you and me. So Jesus was sitting around the dinner table with his friends eating supper. We call it the Last Supper because it was the last meal they ate together before Jesus died on the cross. During the meal, Jesus suddenly left, got a big bucket of water and a towel, knelt down on the floor, and started washing the disciples' feet. That was awfully nice of Jesus because back then, people walked around on muddy roads without wearing shoes or sandals. They probably stepped in a lot of dirt and camel poop. And now here was Jesus, kneeling right next to their dirty, sweaty, stinky, poop-caked feet. 
It might sound like Jesus really hated dirty feet, but even though dirty feet can be pretty gross, especially if you've just stepped in camel poop, Jesus was actually teaching his disciples how to act like him. See, Jesus came to earth so that he could serve other people, even if that meant helping them with things like scrubbing their stinky feet, because Jesus thinks helping people is the coolest. And after Jesus leaves, it's up to his disciples to show people how Jesus would act if he were still on earth. Do you think you could show somebody how to act like Jesus? Well, after that, Jesus had some more to teach his friends. Hopefully he washed his hands since he touched all those feet, but we don't know for sure. Anyway, Jesus knew the disciples might have a hard time always acting like him. So Jesus told them he was going to send a special helper called the Holy Spirit to show his friends how to act like him. And the Holy Spirit still helps Jesus' friends today. Well, after the exciting news about the Holy Spirit coming to help everyone, Jesus started teaching his friends how to stay close to him too, even when he's in heaven. We can stay close to Jesus by talking to him, listening to him, and obeying him by doing the things he was teaching. Jesus explained this by talking about a plant. First, he said that he is like a grapevine growing in a garden. His friends, that's us, are like the branches. God is like the gardener who comes out and helps make sure those branches are healthy and strong, growing juicy, delicious grapes. Think about what will happen if a branch falls off a grapevine. It's not going to be able to grow any grapes laying on the dirty ground. Instead, spiders and ants will come live in it, people will step on it, and it might become a bathroom for birds. So basically, we, the branches, need to be connected to Jesus, the vine, if we're going to be healthy disciples. That means we should talk to Jesus, listen to him, and obey him, even when we don't feel like it. We have to stay close to Jesus to be his followers. After all this garden talk, Jesus wanted to make sure the disciples knew how to pray. So he prayed and showed them that prayer is really just talking to God. Remember kids, Jesus loves all of us so much that he wants us to stay close to him, just like his disciples. Staying close to Jesus doesn't just mean knowing stuff about him. It means knowing him like a friend by talking to him, listening to him, and showing that we love him by obeying what he teaches. And that's the story of Jesus' Last Supper. Now, wasn't that such a beautiful summary of Monday Thursday? If all of that could be summarized into one word, my dear children, that word would be love. And Jesus showed us this love in these two actions, washing the feet of his disciples and then giving his body and blood in the Eucharist under the species of bread and wine. Now, what is so interesting about Monday Thursday, my dear children, looking from the perspective of Jesus, is that even though there was so much going on in his own life, he knew what was going to happen to him in the coming days. He was so full of suffering and agony himself. And in spite of that, he remained focused on his mission. He continued to love his disciples and to try and teach them the commandment of love and what they had to do after he had left them. And that is really remarkable that in spite of going through so much himself, he was still focused on his mission, he was still reaching out to his disciples. And that is something, my dear children, where we could really live by as Christians, that even though we may be going through so many difficulties in our lives, challenging moments, we may have so many things to complain about. But yet, even in the midst of all that, we can choose to love someone else and to help others. This is what we learn from Jesus on Monday Thursday. Now, my dear children, before we go ahead, here is a beautiful song sung by the children of Our Lady of Visitation Church, Nerul. And this is a beautiful hymn originally sung by Don Moyen, titled, Lead Me to Calvary. And in this hymn, we are saying to Jesus, Jesus, help me never to forget what you did for me. So therefore, my dear children, let's all participate in this beautiful hymn. Sing along. The words are on your screen.
Now, after that very beautiful hymn, let us come to Good Friday. Now, the cross is such an important part of our faith. In fact, it is central to our faith. We make the sign of the cross so many times. No? For example, at the beginning of Mass, or when we are starting so many prayers, when we are praying the Rosary, or even when we bless someone, we bless them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The cross is so, so important to our faith, because our Saviour died on the cross for us. But my dear children, when Jesus died on the cross 2000 years ago, it was not seen as a symbol of victory, but under the Romans it was seen as an object of torture, as an object of humiliation and suffering. The cross was an object of shame. But Jesus, by dying on the cross, transformed it into an object of salvation, an object of victory, a symbol of victory. And that is why we call this day Good Friday. So therefore now, let's look at the story of what happened on Good Friday, the, one of the most important days in the Christian calendar, so important to our faith. And after Good Friday, how Jesus rises from the dead on Easter Sunday. After Jesus was arrested, he was led to the high priest. The religious leaders were trying to find a reason to kill Jesus, but they could not. The high priest asked, Are you the Messiah, the Son of God? Jesus replied, Yes, that's right. The high priest said, He has spoken against God. He deserves to die. The religious leaders refused to believe that Jesus was God's son. In the morning, the religious leaders led Jesus to Pilate, the governor. Are you the king of the Jews? Pilate asked. Yes, that's right, Jesus replied. What should I do with Jesus? Pilate asked the crowd. Crucify him, they answered. Pilate did not think Jesus had done anything wrong, but he handed Jesus over and said, Do whatever you want. The governor's soldiers put a scarlet robe on Jesus. They made a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Then they mocked him. Here is the king of the Jews. They beat Jesus and led him away to be killed. The soldiers nailed Jesus to a cross. They put a sign above his head that said, This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Two criminals were crucified next to him. Darkness covered the land. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus shouted again, and then he died. Suddenly, the curtain in the temple sanctuary split in two from top to bottom, and there was an earthquake. One of the men guarding Jesus' body said, This man really was God's son. Jesus was buried in a tomb. A stone was sealed in front of the tomb so that no one could steal Jesus' body. On the third day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. Suddenly, there was an earthquake. An angel of the Lord rolled back the stone and sat on it. The guards were so afraid that they fainted. The angel spoke to the woman, Don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus. He is not here. He has risen just like he said he would. The women left the tomb quickly. They ran to tell the disciples the good news. Just then, Jesus greeted them. The women worshipped him. Don't be afraid, Jesus told them. Tell my followers to go to Galilee. They will see me there. Jesus appeared to Peter and then to the other disciples. Jesus also appeared to more than 500 people who followed him. Many people witnessed that Jesus is alive. Jesus' death and resurrection is the center of the gospel. In Adam, we were spiritually dead in sin, but Jesus died to pay for our sins. Jesus is alive. God gives new life to everyone who trusts in Jesus. Now, my dear children, after having gone through each of the days of Holy Week, we have to ask ourselves, so how do I prepare for Holy Week? No, this is a very important question. Now, in my last program, I had shared with you a beautiful activity titled The Four Cups of Lent. And if you have regularly done this activity on a daily basis, right through the season of Lent, I'm sure that you are more than prepared for Holy Week, to enter into Holy Week along with Jesus. But there is one final step, one thing left to be done, and that is, my dear children, to make a good confession. It's so very important to make a good confession in order to prepare our hearts and minds 
for Holy Week to journey with Jesus on the road to Calvary and then finally towards the resurrection on Easter Sunday. You know, my dear children, sometimes we hurt ourselves when we are playing. We fall down, you can scrape a knee, you can get bruises on your hands or legs, maybe a bump on the head if you have hit your head somewhere. On the other hand, some people get some more serious injuries. You know, you can fall down and injure your hand or leg so much that you get a fracture and then you have to put your hand or leg in a cast sometimes for a month until it heals and it causes us so much pain and so much discomfort. Regular life comes to a standstill. In the same way, my dear children, sin also stops us from enjoying our daily life. It weakens our relationship with God. And therefore, it is so very important to get rid of sin away from our life. And that is why we go to the sacrament of confession, or what is also called the sacrament of reconciliation, so that we can ask forgiveness from God for our sins and to repair our relationship with Jesus, so that once again we can become good friends with Him. Now, therefore, my dear children, a question in your minds may be, how do I make a good confession? Okay. First of all, I am sure that in your church or in your parish, they may have organized confessions for the season of uh, during the season of Lent in order to prepare for Holy Week and so therefore ask your parents to find out what time the confessions are in your church so that you can go to your priest and make a good confession. Now how do I make a good confession? How do I prepare for it? What are the things I have to say to the priest when I go for confession? Let's watch this beautiful animated video to find out more about this beautiful sacrament of reconciliation. When we're baptized, we are washed free of all sin. But guess what? Sin happens. So what can we do? We need to turn to the mercy of God. Only God forgives sin. We can receive His mercy when we pray on our own. But more serious sins require more serious attention. God has given us a place of healing It's our Catholic Church. Some of that healing happens when you go to Mass. The Mass is loaded with prayers asking for God's mercy. But an awesome way to receive God's mercy and healing is in the Sacrament of Reconciliation. This sacrament has been called by different names during the history of the Church. But no matter what it's called, the goal is the same, to receive God's mercy and be reconciled to Him and His Church. But reconciliation doesn't start when you actually sit down with the priest. It starts before that in your heart. This is called contrition. It's where you take some time in prayer, thinking about not just what you've done, but also what you've failed to do. This is also known as an examination of conscience. Now you're ready to see the priest. This is known as confession. Begin by telling the priest how long it's been since your last confession. That helps the priest know what kind of advice to give you after you share your sins. And then confess your sins. Remember, this is a moment between you and God that the priest is helping you with. Be clear about what you've done, but you don't need to tell long stories. When you're finished, the priest will tell you to do something to show your sorrow to God. This is known as penance. It might be saying some prayers or he might suggest something for you to do. At the end of that, he'll ask you to say an act of contrition. That's a prayer that says you're sorry. You can either say a formal one, or you can say something more personal. Then comes the absolution. This is where the power of God comes in. This is the miracle. If you are truly sorry for what you have done, you are forgiven of all your sins. But you're not done yet. The last part of the sacrament is known as satisfaction. This is when you leave the sacrament of reconciliation not just forgiven, but strengthened to do God's will, to do your penance and to live a changed life by His grace. Contrition, confession, satisfaction. It's not just about stating our sins. It's about preparing our hearts, confessing what we've done wrong, and returning to the world filled with God's grace. Until we need to come back and do it again. The bishops suggest we go to reconciliation once a month, 
and the church requires it once a year. Remember, everyone sins. Everyone fails to live a holy and perfect life. So my dear children, we come to the end of today's program. Let's end today's session, the time that we have spent together by singing another beautiful hymn titled, Tell Me the Old, Old Story. I'm sure that you will enjoy this hymn as much as I did when I heard it for the very first time. Once again, the children of Our Lady of Visitation Church, Nerul, will lead us into this hymn. The words are there below on your screen to help you to sing along with us. all from me for this episode of Terrific Tuesdays. But don't go away just yet because we have got a beautiful prayer service organized for you, conducted by the children of Our Lady of Lourdes Church, Orlem. And today we are going to be praying the Rosary, the Five Sorrowful Mysteries. Now you know, my dear children, that one person who was standing at the foot of the cross when Jesus was crucified was his mother Mary. And therefore, when we pray the Rosary, and especially when we are praying the Sorrowful Mysteries, we are witnessing the passion of Jesus, what happened on Good Friday, through the eyes of our Blessed Mother. So therefore, my dear kids, press pause on this video right now. Go quickly, get your rosary, come back, and let's pray the rosary together. Introduction Rosary is taken from the Latin word rosarium, which means crown of roses. Through Mary, we are led to a closer relationship with her son, Jesus. The Rosary is an invitation for us to present our needs to God and to love Him more. Today, we are going to contemplate on the sorrowful mysteries. These mysteries are centered around the passion and death of Jesus. It covers the events of Holy Thursday, after the Last Supper, through the crucifixion of Christ on Good Friday. Let us begin by reverently signing ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first sort of mystery, the agony in the garden. In this decade, let us pray for the leaders of the church. Lord Jesus Christ, watch over the leaders of your church, that they may be faithful to their vocation and that they may be strengthened with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Observe be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most in need of thy mercy. The second sorrowful mystery is surging at the pillar. Let us offer this decade for the present situation. Lord Jesus, you travelled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now, so that we may experience your healing love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and thus is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and thus is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and we shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Amen. Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need of thy mercy. The third sorrowful mystery, the crowning with thorns. Lord, we lift up all the leaders of the world, especially the leaders of our country. Lord, there are so many decisions they have to make daily. Bless them with wisdom grace, and courage. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. O my Amen. Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most in need of thy mercy. The fourth sorrowful mystery, the carrying of the cross, in this decade, let us pray for all families, especially the children and youths, those who are facing difficulties, that they may not lose hope in life and place their complete trust in the Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the name of the Lord, Father, and Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the name of the Lord, Father, and Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and we shall be world with our end. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most in need of thy mercy. The fifth sorrowful mystery, the crucifixion and death of our Lord. We offer this decade for all the orphans, widows, people in aged homes, people on the streets, 
and all those who are affected from any kind of abuse, that they may experience the Lord's presence in their life and believe that there is a Father who loves us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, and now, and in shall be born to that Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and hear our souls to heaven, especially those who are most in need of thy mercy. Hail, O the Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry for banished children of Eve. To you we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn them, O most gracious, and hail them your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our desire, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who is only begotten Son, by His life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal salvation. Grant, we beseech you, that meditating upon these mysteries in the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Namgare, remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left and aided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee I come, before thee I stand. Simple and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Jesus, you're